Hello everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Gaming in the Wild, a video games podcast about games from the artistic, creative side of the tracks, from indie to AAA. My name's John, I'm your host, and today we're focusing on the indie part of the equation that I just gave you. Um, This podcast covers all kinds of games, but I pick out games that I think are interesting in some way, that have something that we can look at, something that we can hook onto. And at the start of this year, at the very start of 2023, uh, we're getting through January pretty fast. It's it's passing quickly. Um, but I've been intending to do this episode for a while. Um, I wanted to look ahead to all of the cool indie games that are coming out in 2023. There are quite a lot. There are some that have been bumped back from 2022. There are some that have been indefinitely bumped back that everyone's waiting for um, with bated breath. And there are some little fresh ones that have been announced recently or that have been sailing under the radar just a little bit. So what I'm going to do in this podcast is run through 20 indie games that I have had my eye on, that I've had wishlisted, that I've been following for announcements, and so forth. Some of them we have release dates for, some of them are penciled for quarter one or spring, some of them are penciled for 2023 generally, and some we just know that the game exists and we don't have a date for. But there are a whole load of really interesting games to talk about, Um, So I'm going to run through some of those today for you. But I've been playing a few games as well. I've been playing some pretty interesting stuff, actually. Um, So just to start the podcast off, let's talk through the games I've played in the last week or two. Um, First of all, I've been playing a little bit of Melatonin. This is a super cool, stylish rhythm game um, that came out in December of last year. Um, I finally got into it and I've been playing it handheld on Switch and having a great time. Um, I'm not a huge rhythm game guy, but this one has so much style. Um, The visuals have this neon, pastel, vaporwave sort of look to them. Um, And the the things that you are doing in Melatonin are super cool and interesting. You're not just like hitting the button in time, but you're seeing on-screen animations and loads of really cool, fun, dreamlike scenarios. Um, The premise of this game is that you are dreaming, um, you are having rhythm in your dreams, you're dreaming of songs and you're doing things to those songs. So maybe there is a food level where you're in a fast food joint and you have to catch burgers and hot dogs that are being flung towards you um, on the rhythm. Sometimes you have to hold down the button and release. Sometimes you have to press it three times fast. And after you've completed a little a little trial of different rhythm types, then you will finish that dream. You'll go into a little overworld and you will move on into the next dream where you might be doing something like working a checkout and you have to scan food really quickly um, or sports and you have to hit baseballs that are coming towards you in different looping arcs or fastballs, etc. Um, and I've had a really, really good time with this one so far. It's very, very addictive. Um, it's not incredibly challenging in a really good way. So you're moving through all of these dreams very quickly. And then after you've completed a handful of them, you do a super level. They come in sets of four Um, And the fourth level that you have to do is a combination of all the things that you've learned in the last four dreams. Um, It's really nice and cosy to play on Switch. This has been a really fun little game, having a great time with it. I'm getting towards the end now, and I'm looking forward to a kind of a mega mix of all of the different rhythms. So it kind of chops between baseball, food, cashier, uh, shops, technology, using a phone, receiving messages, and all of these little dreams that you've had and the different rhythms that you've had to learn come out in a really cool, fun, mashed up way. So I think I will finish this one and I will come back to you with a full review when I've done so. I've also played and finished another little indie that slipped out at the end of last year in December. Um, This one is called Little Lil Gator Game. Lil Gator Game. (laughs) And it's like a 3D spin on the short hike formula. It has little flourishes of inspiration taken from Breath of the Wild Um, such as climbing and gliding, um, little story beats that are familiar from Short Hike, where you're a kid on an island. Um, In this case, you're trying to persuade your big sister to play. She's back from school, and you, as a little baby gator, just wanted to play, and so you're trying to build a fun RPG that she'll stop doing her homework and come and play with you. Uh, It's quite delightful. I rocketed through it in just a few sessions, um, and I think I'm going to be doing a full review of that one too. But if you are a short hike fan who plays on Switch, 
uh, Lil Gator game is an easy recommendation. So I'll be looping back around to that one. And I've been dipping in and out of a few other things too. I'm still playing High on Life, the comedic first-person shooter with a cartoony sci-fi scenario going on. Um, I started playing a little bit of the excavation of Hobbs Barrow, a pixel art point and click, all on Switch. I've been playing a lot of Switch, just catching up on the indie games that I missed at the tail end of last year. Um, and after this preview episode, the podcast will be getting back to regular service. And so you can expect um, a whole bunch of game reviews from me in the coming months. And before we get into the preview, allow me to just briefly mention that this is a patron-supported show. So if you do enjoy this podcast, or if you're watching over on YouTube, welcome. Um, this show comes out every week. I've just started uploading it to YouTube too. So if you just found the podcast through YouTube, or if you're a podcast listener, either who's been listening for a long time or has just discovered the podcast at the start of this year, you can support this podcast on Patreon at patreon.com slash gaminginthewild. Um, for that, you will get an invite to our Discord community, a cosy little corner of the internet where a load of nice people just talk about games all day long. We play Guess the Game, we play Wordle, uh, we share what's on sale, what we've bought, what we're playing, we share screenshots and we talk about games that are coming up. Um, if you would like to join us, you also get a whole bunch of bonus episodes. There are nine in the back catalogue and more on the way. And I'd like to say a big thank you to the three most recent patrons. So thank you very much to Brendan Zapp, Gordon and Lawal. All of you are very much appreciated and thanks very much to all my existing patrons as well. And with all of that said, let's move on and get into it with a 20 game preview of the indie games that we have to look forward to in 2023. So first on the list is a game that came out already. It came out on January 19th. It's called Colossal Cave. Um, it's based on a 1975 text adventure that has been reimagined in 3D. And so this is a 3D cave exploration game. It's out on PlayStation, Switch, Xbox, and Steam. And the developers describe it by saying, Colossal Cave is an exciting point and click adventure into a mysterious cavern a reimagining of the celebrated text adventure by Will Crowther and Don Woods. Acclaimed game designer Roberta Williams brings you her vision of the game that inspired her to create her own legendary games. And Roberta is one of the co-founders of Sierra, who did the King's Quest games and lots of classics that people will remember if they've been playing games for a really long time. So it's really interesting that she has um, taken this game, which is clearly very important to her, taken a text adventure which describes environments to you in an evocative way, and decided to rebuild that game um, as a 3D exploration game. It's a very intriguing idea. So this one is definitely going onto my wish list. I'm just very curious about the whole idea of taking a text adventure, which by nature paints pictures in the player's mind with text and lets them fill that space themselves. And so it's a very interesting idea to me to take a text adventure and to reimagine it in 3D. Um, I will definitely be checking that one out at some point, and you can do so right now if you want to, because it is out. Um, there are some people streaming this game, so I might well dip into some streams and just get an idea of the kind of game that this is. Um, the next game that's coming up is my first big indie game of the year. This is one that I've been excited about and that I've talked about before. It's coming out on January 31st for PC and PlayStation 5, and it is Season, A Letter to the Future by Scavengers Studio. I've been very excited about this game. Um, the, the first trailer of it, in which your protagonist with round sunglasses is looking out at the world, taking recordings, taking photographs, and cycling through this beautiful 3D world in which the season is changing with bright foliage, with giant trees, uh, with the road stretching out before you. It's just such an interesting game and it looks so good. I'm getting the same kind of vibe from Season A Letter to the Future that I got from Sable. Um, and Sable was obviously one of my games of the year in 2021. Um, and I absolutely loved the freewheeling exploration, the sense of loneliness, the sense of being alone in a big, beautiful world and just being set free to go and explore it. Um, season is more character-based and there is more of a more of a story here, it seems. But similar to Sable, it appears to be somewhat modular in that you go and talk to different people, you find out about their concerns, you find out about their lives, uh, you document them. 
uh, and meet them and experience them. And I'm just very into this idea of documenting a world, meeting all of these interesting people. And the premise that the world is changing is something that we can all relate to. Um, but the art style of this game, uh, the writing, the activities that you do in it, the the combat-free exploration um, and moving through large spaces in a freewheeling kind of way really, really, really appeals to me. So I'll be jumping on season as soon as it comes out. And number three on my list is another game that I've mentioned before. It's um, It got a date last week, so it's coming out on PC and Mac on February 17th. This one was unveiled during Day of the Devs at the Summer Games Fest. And as soon as I saw the line-drawn, macabre and beautiful um, illustrations that make up the visuals of this game, I was absolutely hooked. There was a demo for this one too, and I got through it in one sitting. It's a point-and-click game um, in which you are moving through a city by clicking on doors to enter a room, and then when you're in the room, there might be someone sitting in the corner. They're all skeletal figures um, with long, beaky noses on their skulls. Um, there might be pictures on the wall that you can click on, and if you click into those pictures, each one presents a cool little puzzle, whether it's a physics-based puzzle or a pattern-based puzzle or a logic puzzle, or like a sliding block thing where you have to make a shape appear um, and then a little safe will open. You get a little object that you can then use elsewhere in the room. So it's a series of self-contained puzzles, all of which are funny, all of which are sad. There's lots of... Um, dusty old bones and dead bouquets of flowers that you have to open and sift through to find something. Um, it's it's tender in some way, like there is um, a humanity in this game that I've been absolutely transfixed by. It's by a solo developer called Madison Carr, aka Handful of Bugs on Twitter. She's made one game before called, I think, Landlord of the Woods. I've downloaded that one on Steam and I'm going to be playing that one. Um, and she describes the game as... Birth is an adventure puzzle game about constructing a creature from spare bones and organs found around the city in order to quell your loneliness. And there is another little description on Steam for this game that I really love, and it says, You are alone. You will build a creature, a partner, a wet, warm heart, a collection of bones. Um, and I think for certain people, this aesthetic and this feeling that this game is summoning is just really going to sing. It reminds me of some classic... Um, books, illustrated books like the Gashley Crumb Tinies. Um, it's a little macabre, it's very, very dark, but it's also full of humanity and warmth. Um, I have actually played the full game of Birth and can confirm that it is absolutely worth your time and you should be excited about it. Um, I will say that it was definitely best played with a mouse, this one, as you're pointing and clicking. Um, so if you're waiting for it on console, I say if you've got a chance to play it on a, a Mac or a PC, then just get it on that platform because it will play very fluidly for you. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot more about birth in the future, um, and that's coming out on February 17th. I will also say that because these games aren't out yet, um, when I've taken music from them, I wasn't able to buy it on Bandcamp. So I've taken the music from trailers, which means that there are gameplay sounds in the music. So if in the background you hear beeps and bops and little clicks and so forth, uh, little UI sounds, that's because the music in this episode is taken from game trailers. And right on cue, there were a couple of clicks and beeps and bops. Um, those are the three games that have firm release dates from the 20 that I have here. The next two are penciled in for quarter one of 2023, which theoretically means that they are coming out by the end of March. But let's see, neither of them have release dates as yet. So it's starting to be cut a little fine, you know, for getting copies out to journalists and all of that kind of thing. But, you know, games do come out, we can live in hope. And so the next two that I have here are... Terra Nil. Uh, this one is by Free Lives. It is published by Devolver. It is described as a reverse city builder. It's coming out only on PC to start. It's definitely another mouse game. You're dragging, dropping, drawing shapes, pulling things out of pallets, um, scanning the screen with your cursor. And so this is one that I will hope to play on Mac if a Mac version surfaces. Um, they describe the game as a reverse city builder about ecosystem reconstruction turn a barren wasteland into an ecological paradise complete with different flora and fauna, then clean up, 
leaving the environment pristine. Um, I absolutely love the whole idea of this game. Um, we've all been playing city builders, at least I have, for as long as I've been playing games, pretty much. I remember playing the very first Sim City um, as a kid. I remember playing Populous and Settlers and all of those kind of point and click resource games, um, all of which involve cutting down trees, mining rock, devastating the environment, clearing space to build human buildings. Um, the whole thrust of humanity over the last few hundred years has been pretty much set in motion along this very destructive track. And so I'm fascinated that video games are starting to catch up with the current thinking, which is that we should leave the natural world alone. Uh, we need trees to produce oxygen. We need wild space for animals to thrive. And that all of the animals in the world and all of the insects and all of the fish are all sewn into a delicate tapestry that we have been distorting um, through our human industry. Um, and so the, the whole idea of Terra Nil as a game in which you use machinery to regenerate an ecosystem and then take that machinery away to leave a wild world is just a lovely vision and not a vision that we hear of very much. You know, in video games, it's often all about post-apocalypse. It's about living in ruin. Um, and there is very little in terms of more utopian visions where we use technology to try and fix the damage we have caused um, and to imagine a better future. So Terra Nil really chimes with me on a philosophical level. I love the idea of this game. I'm very glad it's being made. Um, I have played a demo of it. It was on PC running in a partitioned drive in my Mac, which is not the way that this game is intended to be played. And so it ran very, very slowly. Um, but I could tell that if it was running smoothly on a computer, then I would just get sucked right into it. Um, you can put down things like wind turbines and attach them to power generators that you can then attach to seeding machines or watering machines that that just fill the world with beautiful plants. Um, this dry, devastated desert is repopulated with verdant life. Um, and I can imagine getting completely lost in that game, given a chance. So I'm holding out hope that this one comes out for Apple computers as well. That is Terra Nil. And the second game that I have noted down here is coming out in quarter one is Chia. This is a, an adventure game in which you, a third person adventure game in which you run around an island or a series of islands. You can boat between them in a wind waker sort of style. You can glide through the air, you can climb things. There's another Breath of the Wild influence here. It's a very colorful game. It looks to be violence free, um, which I really appreciate. Um, the description of this one from the developers is Join Chia on her tropical open-world adventure as she sets off to rescue her father from the cruel tyrant Mia Vora, the ruler of the archipelago. Um, so this one seems fascinating. You can jump between animals in this game. So it's another game that is about humanity and our connection to nature. Um, it's so colourful and it looks like the movement is so nice. As I watch gameplay of this game, I'm very taken with how fluid and free the movement seems to feel. They do also describe the game as a physics-driven sandbox, which sounds very, very promising. And again, um, that's part of what makes Breath of the Wild such an enduring game, is that people can use this, this very, very playable world to make their own fun. Um, I also really like that Awaseb, the developers of this game, are from New Caledonia, um, the archipelago, and they have made a game that is all about the culture of New Caledonia. It's all about the, the folk tales, the, the philosophy and the lifestyle. So this is a really colourful, nature-focused game, um, and I'm really, really into the look of it. I can't wait for Chia. Um, and that one's supposed to be coming out in quarter one of this year as well. The next game that I have here is one that I'm really excited about. It is Hyperlight Breaker by Heart Machine, the developers of Hyperlight Drifter and Solar Ash. It is down for spring 2023, um, which is March 20th to June 21st. I had to Google that. Um, so March to June is the spring release window, it roughly corresponds to quarter two. Um, but Hyperlight Breaker, I think, will come out first on PC. I've got a feeling that this one might sprawl a little. Um, no Clip did a development documentary about it called Hyperlight Development. It is a multiplayer game, 
um, and that seems like a bit of a departure for the makers of two excellent single-player games. And it seems to build on the aesthetic of Hyperlight Drifter with the gameplay of Solar Ash. Um, so more free-flowing, more 3D, but with that beautiful palette and that gothic, sci-fi, neon dream quality that Heart Machine seem to bring to everything. Um, and they describe it as, Enter the overgrowth, a new land in the world of Hyperlight. Play alone or with friends to explore massive biomes, defeat brutal monsters, create new builds, survive the mysterious crowns, and overthrow the almighty Abyss King. So this is a fascinating one, and uh, Danny from Noclip, they're still filming the Hyperlight development series, and on the last Noclip podcast, Danny let slip that there had been some fairly substantial gameplay changes in the, the time since they did their last documentary episode. So I've got a feeling that this one might drag on for longer than we might like, but you know, it's all good if they're just taking the time to get it right. I'm very excited for anything that Heart, Mas Heart Machine produces, and so I'm very excited for Hyperlight Breaker. A game that I am more confident will come out, um, it's noted down as quarter two, is Nine Souls by Red Candle Games, the makers of the controversial horror game Devotion. Um, this is a side-scrolling Sekiro-like focusing on deflection combat, according to the developers, which does sound like a little bit of a nightmare to a gamer like me, but it looks absolutely beautiful. It's got a lovely visual style. It has really nice hand-drawn looking art. Um, it's a very intriguing game, this one. And it was initially crowdfunded, which is pretty cool, and it smashed its goal uh, to the point at which console ports have been confirmed. Um, there is a colourful trailer for it on Steam that I recommend checking out. That's Nine Souls. Um, the next one on here is another really colourful, cool, interesting-looking game called Venba by Vizai Studio. Um, this one is noted down for coming out in spring. This one is a cooking-focused game inspired by Indian family culture. Absolutely love that we're starting to see more uh, multicultural games that aren't just from the Western uh, Caucasian cultural hegemony uh, coming forward. This one looks fascinating. Um, I love cooking, and so I love the idea of games that are focused on not just cooking and food and putting recipes together, but the culture that surrounds cooking as well. What it means to families, uh, recipes being passed down, um, different ingredients and the sources of them. There is so much culture attached to food as well, and so it's really nice to see a game that is aiming to celebrate that. Uh, this one's coming out on Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Um, they describe it as a narrative cooking game where you play as an Indian mom who immigrates to Canada with her family in the 1980s. Players will cook various dishes and restore lost recipes, hold branching conversations, and explore in this story about family, loss, love, and more. I'm really interested in this one. This seems like an interesting game. It's not something that we see a lot of. Uh, that is Venba. Um, and the last game that I have in this little block, which is the Spring and Quarter 2 block, is a game that I think most people have heard of by now. It is Planet of Lana, developed by Wishfully, published by Thunderful. Um, this one is coming out on Xbox and PC. I believe it's a day one Game Pass game. Um, they describe it as a hand-painted puzzle adventure game framed by an epic sci-fi saga that stretches across centuries and galaxies. Um, this looks pretty interesting. I think all of us were smitten by the launch trailer, which I think came out last summer or even the summer before last, um, with a very kinetic chase scene where you're riding a little machine beneath the feet of giant clomping robots. It looks really, really exciting. It's got a Studio Ghibli style um, visual flair to it. Um, the developers have let a few more details slip of this one. It's been around for a while, this one, so you can see gameplay videos of it online that reveal it to be a bit of a puzzle platformer. It looks a little bit like Inside. Um, the footage that I have seen, there is stealth where you're creeping through grass and avoiding machines. Um, you have a little robot buddy that you have to use to solve puzzles, traverse or puzzles, open doors, open the way forwards. Um, the developers have let slip that it is a rescue mission game. You're on a quest to save Lana's older sister uh, from sinister machines. Um, this one looks really cool. I can't wait to play it, Planet of Lana. I'm a little bit, a little bit worried after the 16-minute gameplay um, video that was released that um, it looked a little bit more rudimentary than I was hoping for and a little bit more slow. It looked like everything was moving at foot speed, at pedestrian speed, 
And the thing that really caught my attention about the trailer was that high-speed galloping on the backs of machines. If it does turn out to be just a simple puzzle platformer, nothing to say it won't be good, but I do hope that we get a little bit of that, that extra interesting, uh, dynamic, kinetic kind of flair that made the trailer pop so much. And with that, we're moving into games that do not yet have a release window, but are penciled for 2023, so let's get into it with a super cool hand-drawn shadow jumping game called Skim. And pretty much everyone has been referring to this game as Shim since it was announced. It's S-C-H-I-M. Um, I watched a little developer interview today and they referred to it as Skim or something like that. It's, um, I believe they're from the Netherlands, so it's a kind of an unusual pres um, pronunciation. It was like Skim or something like that, <laughs> but I can't do it. But I do like to try and pronounce things correctly where possible, so let's go with Skim. Um, the developer is called Extra Nice. This one's coming to Steam and PlayStation. And I think that I read or heard somewhere that a scheme is a, a little shadow spirit and that every object has one. Um, and in this game, they have been detached from their objects. And so you are jumping between shadows. It's a hand-drawn, line-drawn world. Everyone has a shadow, everything has a shadow, and you can leap between them. So you're kind of platforming between the shadows of objects. I think you will find some scheme that are the lost shadows of objects and you have to reunite them together. But this one just looks so interesting. It's like an isometric line drawn world um, and you're moving through it in such an unusual way. You're looking for puddles of darkness. Um, it looks very lively. It's got a bit of a goose game feel to it somehow. Um, that one's skim and that one's penciled for 2023. I'm going to rattle through a few of these quite quickly because some of them we don't have a lot of info on. We might have seen like a, a one minute reveal trailer, but there's not a lot of info out there about some of these. Uh, the next one is called Dredge. Um, it's by Team17 and it's coming out on consoles and PC. They describe it as a single player fishing adventure with a sinister undercurrent. Sell your catch, upgrade your boat and dredge the depths for long buried secrets explore a mysterious archipelago and discover why some things are best left forgotten. Love it. Um, this one looks like a game in which you control a little boat, um, a top-down roughly sort of view. Um, you're going over rolling waves in the darkness. You're following the light of lighthouses. You're navigating treacherous rocks and tides um, and dredging, stopping to fish in that Wind Waker style. You see a little bubble drop a net down, see what's down there. Sometimes I think it is going to be things that you don't particularly want to find, get the feeling that there is a bit of a Lovecrafty, what lies beneath the surface kind of feel to that one. So look out for Dredge. Um, the next one is actually by Simago, the makers of Sayonara Wild Hearts, a game I absolutely love. Um, they have a new game that has been quietly released called Laurelie and the Laser Eyes. Um, it's listed as coming soon with a 2023 release window. Um, and this one is very interesting looking. It, it issues the super bright, colorful, eye-searing style of Sayonara Wild Hearts um, and goes back to the more gothic games that Simago have made before that one. Um, this one looks like a kind of a noir exploration game where you're exploring an old Baroque manor um, and you're talking to weird people finding out what the hell is going on with them. It's, it's all very obscure. It's worth watching the trailer. Um, you, can, you can get an idea of what the gameplay is going to be. It's a mystery game. Um, they describe it by saying, the stage is set. Imagine an old manor, perhaps a hotel or a museum, somewhere in Central Europe. A woman wanders in search of answers. An international auteur, what does he want? An aristocratic artist who killed her. A vagabond illusionist, who is he? And you, the wandering woman, why are you here? Um, I am always here for Simago, that's for sure, because Sinara Wild Hearts blew me away. They are very, very inventive, um, and I'm super curious to see what they're doing next. That one is Laurelie and the Laser Eyes. Um, another fun one is Spirit Tea. It's the words spirit and tea, but with no space. Spirit Tea. Uh, coming soon, it's listed as, with a 2023 window. It's by Cheese Master Games. It's coming to all the consoles, Mac and PC. Um, they say this one's a life sim and a management game mixed together. Um, you live day by day, finding local NPCs and spirits to help, taking in tons of different hobbies, ranging from bug catching to karaoke. So I think I heard about this one on the... Um, 
the Wholesome Games channel. It looks like a very, very wholesome top-down game. Uh, nice visual style, um, and I like the idea of mixing together a life sim and a management game. It is something that we've seen before, um, but this one has a nice flair to it, so I will be keeping an eye on Spirity. Um, the next few that we've got here are games that we have heard about before, but I still have my eye on them. One of them is High Water by Demagogue, who made Golf Club Wasteland. Um, that's a game that I really, really liked. Um, and it looks like High Water continues in the Golf Club Wasteland world. Um, that game was perhaps made best of all by a radio show that you listen to as you are golfing through the ruins of Earth. Um, and you listen to this amazing podcast um, radio show with investigative stories, with interviews, with music, future music. And so it's all composed material, and it's an amazing way to reveal a world to someone, is to let them listen to this. Um, this it's a, I guess it's like a This American Lifestyle podcast, where it's slice of life. Um, tell us a story kind of thing. Um, it also had announcements in it. So it would have announcements about oxygen usage, uh, water usage, things that people shouldn't be doing. And that, that gives a, a hint of an authoritarian system or a scarce resource system where everything that you do has to be managed so that people can survive. Um, but High Water seems to be set in a, a flooded earth um, it's not a golf game this time. They say it's a tactical turn-based strategy game set in a post-apocalyptic urban world. Navigate by boat, discover urban islands, and gain new allies as you fight your way through the flooded region. Um, so that's High Water. Got one eye on that one. The trailer looks wonderful. Um, I'm really into demagogue devs. I get the sense that there is some imagination in this studio. And so them applying themselves to a 3D tactical turn-based game um, just seems really interesting. Definitely into that one. I've mentioned this next one before too. It is Nyad. Um, if you follow Gamer Instagram or Gamer Twitter, this will probably have crossed your feed at some point. Um, it's a top-down, a truly top-down for a change. So not that Zelda view or not that straight-on um, view, but completely top-down. So you're looking down on the landscape as if the camera is pointed at the ground. Um, there is a winding river with glistening water, brightly coloured flora, brightly coloured fish, underwater plants, and things that you can glimpse on the river bank. And you play a naiad, a water sprite, and you swim in a very languorous sort of way through this winding river, um, solving puzzles such as using flowers to open the way ahead, or corralling fish, or different kinds of things like that. Um, I get the sense that as you continue down the river, you'll start to see some of the impact of humanity. So there's a little environmental theme to this one too. Um, they describe it as a relaxing, minimalist, colourful exploration adventure. Um, that sounds absolutely cool to me. It's, it looks just beautiful. Um, it's blissed out. Um, there was a demo of this one. I played it. I was a little worried about how the swimming feels. There is a boost button and you turn clockwise or counterclockwise. I kind of wish that when you push in a direction, you just went in the direction rather than, rather than having more of a tanky control sort of system going on to control the Nyad. Very much like games like Stray, Solar Ash, Pathless. I think this is a game that is going to be all about motion. Um, so I'm hoping that the movement has been a little bit improved from that demo. Uh, but Nyad is listed as coming soon. It's coming out on PlayStation Switch, Xbox and PC and Mac. I have six games left that have been announced, six indie games that I think are awesome that are coming out this year, all being well, of course. Um, the next one we've seen quite a lot of is Thirsty Suitors, developed by Outer Loop. Um, this is the developer who made Falcon Age, which was a really interesting sci-fi game about colonization, indigenous cultures, and nature. Um, this one's coming out on all the consoles, PC and Mac. It's being published by Annapurna Interactive. I'm really happy to see that. It means that those Falcon Age developers did well enough to get themselves a good publisher and a good publishing deal. Um, they describe Thirsty Suitors as a stylish story-driven adventure that unfolds through turn-based battles, skateboarding, and cooking. And this is another game that relates to Venba. It has like an Indian flavour to it. So you're doing some really interesting dancing. You have this Bollywood-style music in the background. Um, you have family all around you. So again, it's tapping into the kind of cultures that we don't always see in games, and I'm absolutely here for that. I love that there is cooking in this one. Um, the skateboarding is an interesting thing in this one. And the turn-based battles seem really cool. They seem like verbal battles 
kind of, where you have to put down the other person. Uh, one special move that caught some attention on Twitter was that you can call your mom when faced with like a horny guy and she will dress him down and he will just shrink away and uh, lurk away from you. So Thirsty Suitors is a really interesting one. It's got a dating sim kind of feel to it. Very, very colourful, very, very kinetic, full of life, full of colour. Um, I'll be looking out for that one. Um, another one that's been bumped back is Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals by Night School. Um, Night School was bought by Netflix, uh, I think, last year. So they have become part of the Netflix gaming experiment, which I guess means that this game will be out on iOS and Android via Netflix. So I'll be able to play it on my iPhone and Backbone controller. It's also coming out on consoles and computers. Um, it looks pretty cool, actually. I was a big fan of the original Oxenfree. I liked the dialogue system. Um, I liked that it had that Stranger Things kind of vibe to it, where you're on a lost island um, and there are these tears in reality that are really, really freaky. Um, you have strange visions and there are, there are voices coming from some kind of void. Um, Oxenfree was a very, very cool little indie game, very creepy, good soundtrack. And it looks like Oxenfree 2 pretty much picks up where the first one left off. Um, in this one, you move through the tears in reality rather than just trying to open them or seal them um, so there's some interesting time skip stuff going on from the trailers that I have seen. Um, there is a 20 minute gameplay trailer of this one, which I will link to. Um, so I will definitely be having an eye on Oxen Free, but this one feels like it's just been delayed in that way where someone put a pin in it and that pin never came out. So um, I'm not confident on the release of this one, but I would hope that we would see it this year. That's Oxen Free 2. Um, one that has caught a lot of attention online, and I know that some people in our Discord are really looking forward to this one, is Sea of Stars by Sabotage Studios. Um, this one's coming out on consoles and computers. Um, they describe it by saying it tells the story of two children of the solstice who will combine the powers of the sun and moon to perform eclipse magic. And they'll be fending off the monstrous creations of an alchemist known as the Fleshmancer. Um, this is a top-down, pixely Zelda-like. Um, it has a very, very cool, colourful visual style again. It's very eye-catching. Um, I think people do love beautiful pixel art, and they like Zelda-like games. You know, I like those things too. Um, and this one is definitely eye-catching. Um, I have watched the trailer. I can't quite make out uh, what the gameplay is. It looks like it might be... JRPG style combat. Not sure if it's turn based or if it's a mixture, um, like a hybrid of action and turn based. Um, but Sea of Stars, that's one to look out for this year as well. Um, just a couple more here before we get into games that are not announced with a date at all. Um, the first one is one that has flown way under the radar. I've never seen anyone else talking about this game. I think I just came across it in a long, long list on like Games Radar or something. Like, you know, they have a page that's just like an encyclopedia of everything that's coming out with no further details. Um, and that's where I found Harold Halibut by Slow Bros. It's coming out in 2022. <laughs> I've got it in my notes here. So it had a firm release date and was kicked back. Um, it's been 10 years in development. Um, and there is a reason for that. This is a game that is made entirely with stop motion visuals. So it has that Nightmare Before Christmas, Wallace and Gromit, movable puppet feel to it. Very, very cool to look at. And it looks like this one is a really involved story game. Um, there is a story that humanity has left Earth on an arc-like ship, finally arrived at the watery planet, which they are going to settle on, and discovered that it's not safe to breathe there and there is no landmass. And so you're in an underwater city, um, which includes people that were here for the crash, as they call it, when the ship came down to this planet. Um, and you're trying to navigate living in this city. It's got some absolutely beautiful environments. Um, There's like a large arboretum with water outside and the light rippling through, uh, coming through glass, coming through plants. And there's like a sort of a dripping melancholy to the whole thing that reminds me a little bit of the atmosphere of Stray, with people living inside that indoor city where it's cold and dark. Um, Harold Halibut definitely has that, but the visual style with the stop-motion puppets is very eye-catching. Um, I really hope that it doesn't mean that it's heavy on the animation in that Prince of Persia style way. You know, if there's a lot of scripted animations, it can feel like the controls are somewhat unresponsive because you're always wrestling with the animations. I would say that's a risk for Harold Halibut, but it is a story-led game so it's not going to require any super snappy controls or fast reactions. Um, definitely one to look out at. They describe it as a handmade narrative game about friendship and life on a city-sized spaceship 
submerged in an alien ocean. Um, and if you're not intrigued by that one, then I don't know what to tell you, because um, that one really, really has my imagination. One more game here. It's a really big one. It is called Hollow Knight Silk Song. You may have heard of it. It is the sequel to Hollow Knight by Team Cherry, um, initially announced on Switch in 2019. So it's been four years, which seems absolutely absurd. I remember watching that release trailer and being so excited. Has that really been four years? The pandemic really did just take a big chunk out of our lives, didn't it? Um, but it has been re-announced, this time by Xbox, an Xbox Bethesda showcase in 2022, in which they said all the games were coming out in the next 12 months. So that means that Silk Song should be out by June 21st, if they hold to that. Um, it's going to be on Day One Game Pass, it's going to be on Switch and everything. Um, they describe this one, interestingly, as discover a vast haunted kingdom in Hollow Knight Silk Song. Explore, fight, and survive as you ascend to the peak of a land ruled by a silk and song. Um, you control Hornet in this one, who was an NPC in Hollow Knight, a little white-headed bug with a red dress, and she fights with a needle and thread. Um, it looks absolutely fascinating. I am a huge on-the-record fan of Hollow Knight. It's a one-off game. It's the biggest and best Metroidvania. I would say that that includes all of the actual Castlevania and Metroidvanias that I have played. Hollow Knight took the genre to new levels, and it sounds like Silk Song is going to move the template again. So everyone has got a lot of hope on Silk Song, but I really am optimistic about this one. And when it finally comes out, I just can't wait. I can't wait to get lost in that world. It is so dark. It's so melancholy. It's so beautifully drawn and beautifully crafted. Um, I'm just so looking forward to the Embrace of Silk Song. Um, I have one more game here, but this one is a bit of a strange case. Um, this one is called Open Roads. It is a road trip game in which you are a daughter traveling with her mother to try and untangle some family secrets. It's by Fulbright, um, the famous developer who made Gone Home and Tacoma. Um, this one is penciled to come out on PlayStation and Xbox. It is published by Annapurna, and it has been delayed indefinitely, according to the internet. After 15 staff quit the studio, um, the, the guy who runs the studio was accused of toxic behaviour, no further details given. Um, and so I don't know what the fate of Open Roads will be. It seems like this game has been just paused because the studio has come apart at the seams. Um, but we have trailers for it. Um, we have seen... Uh, footage of the game and it it looks like it's pretty far along but that's a really strange case that one so i guess open roads is just going to be an open mystery uh, while we wait and see if that developer can pull themselves back from the brink or if that game is just ultimately cancelled um like the uh, the studio head seems to be at risk of right now um, i guess we'll see that's open roads <laughs> three more games here. These are games that do not have a release date. They do not have a release window. So we know that they exist, but that is all we know. Um, the first one is called Animal Well. You may have seen this one. It's a, a beautiful, dark, pixel art, Metroidvania looking game by Shared Memory and published by Big Mode, um, which is run by some YouTuber. Apparently there is some controversy about that, but I don't know anything about it. Um, someone called Dunkey, maybe, according to Noclip. Um, this game is described as a handcrafted, surrealist, pixel art, survival, horror, puzzle, video game. Good lord, that's a lot of words. And it's about secrets, end quote. Um, this is a really interesting looking one. Um, it looks like there are a lot of systems in this game. It looks like there's lots of unpredictable cause and effects where you prod an animal that then does something that has an effect on the environment and maybe opens a way forward. Um, and so things are chained together. And it seems to be a game that relies on player experimentation to find ways through this dark, hostile world. Um, very interesting looking game. Um, the next one I have that has no release date is Complex Sky. We just heard a little bit of music from that one. Um, made by Complex Blue, a solo developer I believe, and published by Critical Reflex. This one says coming soon on Steam, so it's not a TBC. Um, soon. <laughs> this one's coming soon, so the release date for this one is soon. 
Um, it's coming out on PC only. This is a city builder, and they say it's a futuristic city building game with a unique architectural system. Build the city both ways, up and down. The world is devastated by pollution, and it's up to you to create a fully self-sustainable city in the sky and populate it with human settlers. If you see any video for this game, um, you will see why it's got my attention. The idea of building up and down, like popping these modules together to build tower blocks and then building down from the clouds towards the earth. Everything colourful, blocky and up in the air, like up in the clouds. You're building a city in the clouds in this game. Looks like there is some resource management. It looks like you have to harvest uh, resources in order to build, um, unlock blueprints, um, develop everything. This is another game. It's I don't play a lot of strategy games and builder games, but there is a place in my heart for them. There is a nostalgic place in my heart for this kind of game. I'll be filing this one alongside Terranil as a game that I would like to play on my computer and using a mouse for that fast cursor movement. Finally, last game on this epic list. Um, I actually squeezed more in, so there have been more than 20. Don't tell anyone. The final one is the game that I'm one of the games that I'm most excited about, and one of the games that I'm most sceptical about seeing anytime soon, it is Death Trash by Crafting Legends. And this one went extremely viral when it was first unveiled, I think mostly because of the, the visual style, which is just absolutely fascinating. It's in a post-apocalyptic world, like most of the games that we seem to get today. Um, that's why I'm so happy about games that aren't in that setting, but Death Trash is. But the twist here is that as well as being a sci-fi world where everything is broken down, the world's been taken over by huge amounts of just dumb, ball, like pink flesh that is just draped over everything. It's draped over buildings, it's draped over mountains, um, and it seems like the ground is bleeding. It's got this David Cronenberg weirdness to it with machines and with blocks of flesh just growing everywhere. Um, and you have to wander this world. You have to try and figure out what's going on. I have played the demo of this one and I stopped because I didn't want to spoil myself on the actual game. I felt like I was getting quite deep into the story. Um, it has scavenging gameplay. It has quite tough combat. Um, you have an overworld map where you go between scenarios. Uh, in those scenarios, it can be hostile encounters where you have to fight off bad guys, fight off wild creatures, scavenge materials. It can be settlements where you talk to people, you get more information, you get quest givers, you get back to the overworld, and then you move between the locations again. Um, but the real selling point of this one is that fleshy wasteland. It's just not something that we've really seen before. Um, it's been in development for six years. Um, it came into early access last year, so you can buy it and play it on Steam now. Um, the developer said on the Steam blog, we hope to have the game finished in 2023. Um, so that's a very, very loose... Uh, dream that the game will come out this year. It might be one that we just end up um, hold, putting in our back pocket and holding on to for the future. Um, they describe it as a post-apocalyptic world where cosmic horrors long for humanity but meet punks with shotguns. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, even in the demo, there are moments where you end up conversing with this huge Lovecraftian flesh blob um, and trying to find out what it wants and talking to it. Just an absolutely fascinating game. I cannot wait to get my hands on the full version of Death Trash. Let's hope that it's sooner rather than later. But hey, we're good gamers here. We're not the bad kind of gamers. We give the devs all the time they need, and we have trust in them that they will make the games as good as possible. So I remain semi-skeptical about some of these release dates, but very optimistic about the year ahead. What a bunch of amazing games we have. There is loads to look forward to in 2023. So that's it, we did it. We got through all of the games. We got through 24 indie games. Um, I have played a handful of them. I did really enjoy Birth, I have to say. Um, Birth is a game that is gonna stick with me, I think. I have played that one to conclusion. Thanks very much to Madison for sending me a copy. Um, hopefully I will be talking to Madison about that game in February uh, when it comes out. I also can't wait for the release of Season, A Letter to the Future at the end of this month. 
Um, I will be trying out Colossal Cave at some point, and I've just, I'm so excited for all of these games, honestly. Um, the top five games of my 2022 were all indie games, and so, you know, it could well be that some of the games of the year come year end 2023 were on this list. Um, but it's always a surprise that so many games come out that I just have never heard of before until they drop. Like every year seems packed with surprises, really. Um, and so there will be all kinds of indie games that I haven't even mentioned or heard of yet, and I can't wait for it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I'm going to try and make a video version of this one, seeing as the last uh, Games of the Year episode did so well on YouTube. Um, I have downloaded a bunch of footage of these games, and I'll be editing that one together soon. So if you are watching on YouTube, thanks for joining the show. Um, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Um, share it with the friends. Um, if you're listening to the podcast version, then thanks to you too. Um, please do feel free to give the podcast a five-star rating on Spotify, a review on Apple Podcasts. Give it a thumbs up, share it on your social media, send it to someone who you think might like it. Um, and you are, of course, welcome to come and join the Patreon at patreon.com slash gaminginthewild if you'd like to support the show and join the community. So that's it for this episode. I'll be back next week with a review episode. Maybe it will be Black Tail. Maybe it'll be Lil Gator Game. Maybe it'll be Melatonin. Or maybe I will mix all of those together and uh, start reviewing games. The time has come. Uh, holiday is over. Back to it. I'm looking forward to it. And thanks for being along for the ride. Take care of yourselves and each other. And bye-bye for now. Bye.